Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is August 31st, Monday, August 31st of 2015. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally there. We are finally there. It is college football time. NFL, you know, we got preseason right now. You know, it's fine. Everything's good. You know, sadly, we're, they're having to make cuts now, so things are kind of, uh, you know, a little on the sad note of the NFL. But we do have college football. Uh, it, it's it's right there. It is right there. We did have what an opening game for FCS football with the Montana Grizzlies going on the road to take on. Or actually, uh, did they go on the road? They, t- they took on the fourth time defending national champions of the FCS football of North Dakota State and beat them 38-35. Montana gets the W and... Uh, it just you know an, an interesting way uh, and how to start college football. It just it, it just it it just gets you hyped. It gets you ready, knowing that it is finally football season. Uh, I know you know high school's been on. How about De La Salle, the number one team in the country? Go you know plays uh, Ulysses Trinity, a team that's not even ranked in the top what ten in Texas, top five in Texas for sure. Uh, it goes and and Ulysses Trinity beats De La Salle. Unbelievable. Um, it, it's just been great. What a great week for football. Not a, a whole lot of great week for me. Uh, I had a fight, um, you know, Best Buy and Geek Squad <laughs> in a nearby store, and thankfully not the one here in San Marcos. Uh, they were awesome. Uh, and then the U.S. Postal Service decided, you know, to not deliver to my door because my motherboard, in case you guys didn't know, follow me on Twitter, at short underscore sports 24-7. Uh, my motherboard on my computer fried, just died uh, completely. So I had to get a, a new one. I got a new one. Then I found out that one was too big for the case my computer was in, and it was, they said it wasn't. It was just getting impossible to get it in. So I had to order a brand new motherboard, a different one. I, well, it's the original one, but just you know, obviously newer. And uh, now I got to wait on Geek Squad to uh, get it all set up and. It's just been a crazy, crazy week. I'm sorry I haven't brought the show to you guys. But, hey, better late than never. We are here again. College football is right around the quarter, corner. Excuse me. We are, what, four days away? Four days from college football, from FBS football. Ah, oh, man, I, I can't tell you how excited. Especially because TCU, you guys know I'm a Horn Frog fan. I bleed purple, and they play On the road at Minnesota. Oh, I am pumped for that game. Sadly, I freaking work. And with the job that I have, there's no way for me to watch the game. I'm hoping I can get someone's uh, help me out, get the watch ESPN app, and be able to watch it on that or listen to it really because I can't watch it. I just have to put it in my phone or, you know, in my pocket. I I don't know. I I have to get, I somehow have to watch this game or listen to it. I I, I can't just rely on, uh, quarter updates it, it's it's impossible to do that but anyways let's get let's get on with the show it's it's not gonna be a, a long show like a normal show even though this this is called the short sports show <laughs> it's not gonna be too long um but it, it's just gonna be all college football just getting hyped looking forward to the games we're gonna do some game previews uh, but again before we start follow me on twitter at short underscore sports 24 7 uh, uh, become a fan on facebook the link is down below the short sports show everything is down below what you need whether you're listening on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, it, it doesn't matter. All the links are down in the description, So, which I actually did not put. Great. <laughs> Went without a description. All right, guys. So y'all just going to have to bear with me. Um, but, yeah, tweet me using the hashtag, the short sports show. And uh, if you got any questions for college football, for any football questions, uh, whether it's the NFL or college football, be sure to tweet it at me. Again, at short underscore sports 24-7. And I'll be uh, talking about it on live on show. And if uh, the show ends before that, I'll tweet you guys. And then the next show, I'll bring it back up uh, so you guys can get, be heard and stuff like that. So let's get on with it. Number seven, Oregon. We got the rankings now, remember. Uh, has named transfer Vernon Adams as its starting quarterback for the team's season opener against Eastern Washington. His Vernon Adams' former school on September 5th. Uh, Co- head coach Mark Helford said this on Saturday when making the decision. He said the separation was cl- was enough that as we began today, we kind of started our true game. 
week preparations. So the timing worked out for everything. So like I was, I talked about in the last show, I said, if Vernon Adams, since you know it was delayed because he had to go and take another test for uh, Eastern Washington to, to graduate, if Vernon Adams still beats Je- uh, Jeff Lockie, after all of this, you know Vernon Adams got it. Because remember, Vernon Adams was talking about how he was struggling with the playbook, that he needed to step it up, get faster with it, uh, learn it much quicker, and all this other stuff. He had to learn through all of that, and still is learning. And he was late. And he's now going to be the starting quarterback for the Oregon Ducks when they take the field against his former team on September 5th. That is something special right there. That is something special for Vernon Adams. I am truly excited for Vernon Adams. I, I was really happy when he chose Oregon, especially when he didn't choose uh, Texas. I was, I was a little shaky on that. Um, but I, I'm excited. Oregon is, is going to look really good with Vernon Adams. I, I think I don't think they lose that many steps. You know, I'm not saying he's you know bettered or, or as close to uh, Marcus Mariota, but Vernon Adams, I mean, he, he's a dark horse. He is. He, he's someone, you know, a lot of people are going to be very skeptical skeptical of him. I like him. I think he's going to, you know, shine very well at Oregon. And uh, it's going to be exciting. So, people, again, if you don't know what he did at, in his three years at Eastern Washington, he threw for 10,438 yards, 110 touchdowns to 31 interceptions. Let me say that again one more time, guys. 110 touchdowns. To 31 interceptions. He was named twice the runner-up for the Walter Payton Award, given to the FCS Player of the Year. And Adams has been off li- is uh, has been off limits to the media since officially joining the team on August 13th, and is not expected to speak publicly until after the game against Eastern Washington. But I, I mean, in, in just three years alone at Eastern Washington, almost 10,500 yards. That's incredible. Uh, and, and for people that think, okay, well, it was FCS level. Can he beat the big teams? He went on the road and beat a ranked Oregon State team. Then went on the road to play the University of Washington and almost beat them, probably should have beat them. Uh, you know, that shows you he, he knows what it's like to play the Pac-12. He knows what it takes to beat a team. Now he's got more, if not better, talent. Actually, it is better talent. I don't even know why I said that. That sounds stupid. Better talent at Oregon. Imagine what he's going to do there with them. I don't rule out Oregon for the playoffs. I don't. A lot of people have because they they think, you know, without Mariota, they can't really do anything. Receivers are questions. Running back Thomas Heiner out. Guys, watch. Watch Oregon. They're going to sneak up on some people. Uh, they all, The Ducks also announced that uh, Notre Dame transfer Matt Hedgarty, uh will start at center for the Ducks. Uh, the University of Washington has found its starting quarterback, but head coach Chris Peterson said the Huskies will keep that information under wraps until Friday's season opener uh, at number 23, Boise State. This is what he had to say, saying, quote, because it's so late, we think keeping it private helps us a whole lot. So, you know, I, I like it. I can understand it, but... I. You know, I like University of Washington. I do. And uh, it, it kind of, you know, as a fan, it sucks because you really want to know what's going on, who's going to be the starting quarterback, you know, what's happening. So right now, here are your guys. You got true freshman Drake, Jake Brownie, a redshirt junior Jeff Lindquist, and redshirt freshman K.J. Carter Samuels. They've all been competing for the job since January uh, when Brownie enrolled early. Brownie, who threw for 16000 775 yards and 229 touchdowns in his record-setting career uh, at one of the California high schools. Uh, he's re- received strong reviews throughout camp, and a lot of people consider him the favorite. Now, the previous starter from last season was Siler Miles, but he retired from football due to chronic hip injuries. Uh, and Jeff Linkwitz, he, sp- he spent some time out there uh, after Miles was gone and-, and took over the starting job. You know... I haven't watched too much of them. I'm just hoping University of Washington finds their quarterback. Uh, I mean, they've been lost uh, ever since, what, Jake Locker? I mean, I know they had uh, Price. Uh, Keith Price, was it? I know they had him, but 
you know, after his sophomore year, they really, really, really struggled. Um, and, and in his final two years, just, you know, was really nothing. So, you know, they really haven't had a quarterback, to, a guy that has lead this team. And I, personally, I think it was a head coach at that time, uh, Steve Sarkeesian. I've never liked the guy. I don't like him. I don't like his coaching style. Uh, I think that was one of the reasons the University of Washington was struggling. Now you got Chris Peterson. I think they're still about two more years away from being a, a, a contender in a top bowl game and a contender in the Pac-12. But they're definitely on the right track right now. Uh, it's just finding that starting quarterback. And thankfully, other than Linquist, you got you know true freshman Jake Browning. If, if he doesn't get the starting job, then I could see them redshirting him to keep him there longer. Uh, you got redshirt and KJ Carter Samuels. Uh, he, he's, he, he seems like he could be pretty solid, uh, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Linquist takes it just because of game experience, older dude. Um, I wouldn't be surprised he takes it, uh, and then if anything, pass it on to Browning if something doesn't happen. But um, I think you know, just dog fans, just you know, hold on for another year or two, and then watch Chris Peterson do his job and, and watch him work because uh, it, it's going to be. Seattle, Washington, you're going to have two good football teams there in a, in a few years. Uh, sadly, the University of Miami has lost running back Gus Edwards for the season, an announcement that came Sunday night and with a week to go until the Hurricanes season opener. The news was revealed as the Hurricanes released their first depth chart of the season. Edwards, who was a strong candidate to be the starter, was injured in a scrimmage August 22nd and was in a walking boot last week, though Hurricanes coach Al Golden initially said... He did not expect Edwards to be sidelined for long. This is what he had to say, saying, quote, Gus worked extremely hard for the first time last, or for the first, excuse me, I'm, I'm so screwing up here. For the last nine months uh, to prepare for this moment, he, had, he set a high standard and did a great job leading and being unselfish. We're tremendously disappointed for him, but we will be there with him on the road to recovery and anxiously waiting his return. Um, and of course, this is a huge blow. Gus Edwards is that power guy. I mean, don't I mean he's got some speed, but he he'll knock. He's a grown man. He'll knock you out. Um, you know, obviously, the Miami Hurricanes had a ton of talent. A ton of talent. Look at everybody that was drafted. Duke Johnson. They're obviously the school's all-time leading rusher. Uh, left tackle Eric Flowers. Wide receiver Philip Dorsett. Tight end uh, Clive Walford. You know, had all these offensive players and Brad Kai done. Um, um, incredible job as a freshman um you know they have all this talent just couldn't get the w's and couldn't get it done which to me i think it was clear cut you had that many people drafted and gonna make an impact in the nfl this season and in seasons to come and you went six and seven last year to me it's it's clear cut fire the head coach but i guess it's gonna take another year of a six and seven or something like that uh for miami to finally pull the trigger on uh al golden but Edwards, back to him, he was widely expected to pick up, pick up some slack and showed flashes in his first two seasons with the Hurricanes while averaging 5.4 yards per rush and 11 touchdowns in just 127 carries. Um, and again, he's just, it sucks for him being gone. They do have Joe Yearby, Joseph Yearby, with 509 yards and a touchdown last season. Also, true freshman Mark Walton will step in. He'll have to step up now. Um, they have sophomore Trayon Gray, uh, who's on limited action, but you know, all of these guys are going to just, are going to have to step it up. All, all three are going to be in a rotation. Joseph Yearby, a uh, good thing for him to be back at this time because Brad Kai is going to need some help, you know, with really no offensive weapons, offensive line going to be somewhat of a question. And now you lost one of your biggest running backs out there. You know, it, that doesn't help him at all. So, uh, it, it Thankfully, University of Miami, they open up against Bethune Cookham. <laughs> they open up against them, and they don't play the ACC until October 10th when they go on the road to play Florida State. So you got some time to adjust and get these players ready for football, but huge, huge loss for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, two nice things that these uh, schools are doing, South Carolina – uh, will wear stickers on their helmets this season to honor the nine people who died in a shooting at Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston this past June. If you're watching this on YouTube, the video version of this clip, uh, you were seeing the picture. It's a very nice picture. It really is. The team will have a decal with a palmetto tree 
with nine doves around it for the nine black victims at the church June uh, on June 17th. Dylan Roof has been charged with the murder of those shootings, and uh, South Carolina head football coach Steve Spurrier said Sunday that the players felt it was appropriate to honor those killed in the tragedy. So, quote, so it will be on our helmets this year in honor in memory of those folks. Uh, Virginia Tech will also wear a decal on their helmets against number one Ohio State on Monday night to honor slain uh, Rokani. I, I hope I said that right. Television journalist Allison Parker and Adam Ward. Parker and Ward were shot and killed while doing a live broadcast for WDBJ7 uh, on Wednesday. The decal features the number seven on the maroon and teal Excuse me, a number seven and a maroon and teal ribbon around it. Uh, Ward graduated from Virginia Tech in 2011. The maroon color on the decal symbolizes his tides to the Hokies, and teals was uh, Parker's favorite color. Uh, there will also be a moment of silence before the game. This is what Virginia Tech head coach Frank, uh, excuse me, Frank Beamer said this, saying, quote, It's extremely important that the families and the loved ones of Allison Parker and uh, Adam Ward Know that we stand united with them through this painful time. My heart is absolutely broken for the Ward and Parker families, and my prayer is that they gain strength and peace through the support and love of this community. Um, so really nice things that these two programs are doing uh, for them. And also we got some breaking news, but uh, it, it is really nice. Uh, I wish Virginia Tech would do that you know, all year long, not just a one game. I know it's against Ohio State, but still, I wish it was um, a little bit longer. But still very nice um, for what they are doing. Uh, the news was Bill's quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, will be week one starter. According to Fox Sports, he beat out Matt Castle and EJ Manuel for the job. Also, the Cowboys have no interest in signing recently cut Bill's running back, Fred Jackson, at this time. And also, there was no settlement reached between Tom Brady and the NFL. The U.S. US District Court Judge Berman expected to rule on the case by Friday. So, uh, some pretty big news across the NFL right there. But it is time to talk about college football. And it is time to go through our, I guess we can do our picks. I didn't set up for picks, but I want to do picks. I love doing picks. And uh, you guys, I'm sure you love doing picks as well. So, this is what we'll do. Uh, our picks, I will post uh, after this show is over with. I'll go through, uh, I'll tell my picks right now. And then I will put uh, a picture on Twitter of my and Facebook of my picks. And you are allowed to do your picks as well. You can tweet it, DM, um, really whatever. Uh, and, and message me or you know put a picture of those. You can just use your phone, you know, uh, like the notepad on there, whatever. Uh, and, and and tell me what your picks are. At the end of the season, we'll give something away. You guys, let me know what you think. Hey, it's not gonna be like a 50 inch TV or something, because you know I I'm on that broke budget as well. But it, I'll save something up so that way it's a, it's a great way to interact with you guys. And whoever has, even if I win, the second person, whatever, whoever has the that who's ever right has the most picks right. Um, at the end of the season, before the bowl season, then we'll also do a special one for the bowl season. We'll win something. I'll announce it uh, Friday when we do our show again. We'll do a show this Friday, um, and I'll announce it, what it will be, and we'll have a first, second, and third place winner. That's what we'll do. All right, guys, so here we go. Stick with me now. Of course, Thursday, September 3rd is the first game of college football of the FBS. It starts off with Alcorn State at Georgia Tech, 6.30 Central Time on ESPN3. Uh, obviously, we're going Georgia Tech on that one. Uh, then after that, my game, TCU Horned Frogs, number two ranked TCU Horned Frogs, taking on Minnesota Golden Gophers in Minnesota at 8 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, who else am I going to go with? Who else am I going to go with? Of course, TCU gets the W. And then finally that night to wrap it up at 9 p.m. Central Time on the Pac-12 Network, you have UTSA Roadrunners going against the Arizona Wildcats, number 22, Arizona. Uh, I have to go. You know, this is this is pretty tough. Um, 
You know, last year, Arizona beat UTSA 45-21. It's probably exactly what's about to happen again. Um, so let's go with uh, Arizona. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even though I would love to see UTSA get the upset right there, but UTSA lost, what, like 22 players, 22 seniors? Yeah. On Friday, we have number five Michigan State taking on Western Michigan at 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPNU. Obviously, Michigan State. Number four, Baylor. Boo. Going against SMU. Even worse. Boo. Actually, no, I like SMU more than Baylor. I hate Baylor with an absolute passion. Uh, 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. I'm going with SMU, baby. Pull the upset. Pony up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I hope SMU wins that so bad. I've, I've never have rooted for SMU so much that I am right now and in, in, in cheering for SMU. Uh, University of Washington goes on the road to play Chris Peterson's old team, number 23, Boise State, 915 Central Time on ESPN. I am going with... Boise State. Uh, it, it, it sucks. I want to go Washington here, but Boise State has more, <clears throat> excuse me, has more experience on that team. We still don't know who the starter is for uh, Washington. And, uh, you know, it's just the defense of Boise State. A lot of people are not looking at Boise State and the defense and what they can do. Watch it. Just watch it. And then we'll go Saturday, September 5th. We'll do all the top 25 teams. That's all we're doing. Texas State. Taking on number 10, Florida State. I wish my Texas State Bobcats could do something and get the W, but I don't see that happening. And anyway, Everett Golston has a field day against a terrible defense. Florida State gets the victory. Uh, number 21, Stanford taking on Northwestern. Going with uh, – that is 11 a.m. on uh, C- Central Time uh, on ESPN. Going with Stanford. Louisiana Monroe going against number 9, Georgia. Going with Georgia there. Tennessee Martin going against number 17, Ole Miss. Ole Miss. A lot of these games are going to be clear cut for the first, you know, what, two or three weeks. Um, Walford taking on number 12, Clemson. Deshaun Watson. Watch him. He gets a W. Uh, Virginia taking on number 13, UCLA. And I'm going to go Virginia here. Virginia has more experience, uh, you know, even though the offense is a little questionable. But UCLA starting a true freshman at quarterback. That's going to be a 2.30 Central Time on Fox. That'll be a good game to watch. But I'm going Virginia there. Uh, University of Texas in El Paso. UTEP, the Miners, taking on number 18, Arkansas, on 2.30 Central Time on ESPNU. Going with Arkansas there. A really good game on 2.30 uh, Central Time on e- uh, CBS. Excuse me. Louisville taking on number 6, Auburn. I am going Louisville here. Uh, I think Auburn is the most overrated team in college football next to Baylor. Uh, I don't understand how you can go 8-5, and five, get demolished in a bowl game, and be projected to go into the playoffs. Uh, Jeremy Johnson does not impress me at all. Gus Malzahn, I have much respect for him, but the defense is very questionable. Offense, you know, they have a great playbook, but, you know, Louisville's defense is going to be there. Uh, it's just whether the quarterback and the receivers can be there. I, I'm going Louisville there. Southeast Missouri taking on number 24, Missouri. Going Missouri there. Cupcake game. Bowling Green taking on number 25, Tennessee. Going with t- Tennessee there. Akron taking on number 19, Oklahoma. Going to Oklahoma. Number 15, Arizona State on the road. In, uh, it's not in College Station, I, don't bl- uh, I do believe. I think it's actually somewhere else. Uh, was it going to be in Houston or in Dallas? Uh, let's see. No, it's going to be in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, Arizona State taking on uh, Texas A&M. A&M's defense still probably really bad. Uh, but Kyle Allen, did he still did he get the starting job? I believe so. Uh, so you know, hopefully Kyler, Kyler Murray can go out there and uh, you know. Save it for A&M, but I'm going with Arizona State. They're too explosive to not go for them. Uh, and now and now ESPN wants to mess up on me. Come on, I'm trying to get the scores. All right. Uh, uno momento, folks. How is everybody doing? <laughs> no, here we go. Uh, after that, McNeese State taking on number 14, LSU, 630 Central Time on SEC Network. Going with LSU there. 
The University of Texas taking on number 11, Notre Dame, 6.30 Central Time on NBC. Uh, you know, I like to see Texas keep it close. <clears throat> I, I just, uh, Notre Dame, quarterback situation, you know, I got a quarterback, but I don't know if I'm sold on him. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll still go Notre Dame. I'll still go Notre Dame here. Uh, Eastern Washington at number seven, Oregon, seven o'clock central time on Pac-12 Network. Brandon Adams taking on his old team, as we all know, as we just talked about. Brandon Adams will be the starting quarterback. Going with Oregon, of course, to get the W. Number 20, Wisconsin taking on number three, Alabama, 7 p.m. central time on ABC. Roll tide on this one. Poor Wisconsin. <laughs> poor, poor Wisconsin. Then Arkansas State taking on number 8, USC, 10 p.m. Central Time on the Pac-12 Network to wrap all games up of top 25. USC there, Cody Kessler has a field date. And then finally, Monday, September 7th, number 1, Ohio State taking on Virginia Tech on the road. Now, Virginia Tech did beat Ohio State with JT Barrett, which a lot of people say was the best quarterback for that team. <clears throat> Again, that's 7 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. Now this game's at home. Virginia Tech is playing with a lot of emotion because of the, the shooting that happened, you know, with the memorial service that they're going to have for them. I'm going Virginia Tech. I'm hoping the Hokies can do it once more, once more for the TCU Frogs. Just please, 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 please <laughs> beat Ohio State. Uh, if not, you know, we'll just have to beat them in National Championship Day. It's all good. But either way, I'm going Virginia Tech. So in case you guys, uh, you know, want to see those picks again, again, I'm going to take a picture of my picks, save them. All picks must be in by the first game of Thursday. They must, must be in. If you're one minute late, you are automatically out for that week. You're done, or actually for the season, really, because I want to get it all updated now because I want to be like, Someone come in week two or week three and say, oh, we'll have a better percentage than this one, but this one was here week one. Snoozy loose. So, must be in by Thursday. We'll just go ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead and say, uh, must be in Thursday, September 3rd at 3 p.m. Central Time. Central Time, guys. 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Must All picks must be in. And that'll do today's show. Uh, it was just, a, again, a, a quick show. College football recap. I'm excited. Um, my TCU Horn Frogs, we got to get it done. If anybody want, wants to help me out and get that uh, Watch ESPN password, DM me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I need to watch my game somehow. I got to watch it. I got to see it somehow. Uh, but if not, guys, as always, thank you so much for listening. Whether you're listening on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, whatever it may be. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Um, And I'll see you guys this Friday. This Friday we'll have a show. We'll recap Thursday night's football games. Again, a more in-depth preview to college football games and the NFL. Any news going around, we'll do our normal show this Friday here on uh, Spreaker.com and wherever else you're listening on. Thank you guys so very much. Again, follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7. I will see you guys Friday. Go Frogs. Go whatever team you're rooting for unless you're rooting for Baylor or SMU or Texas or Texas Tech. That's all. That's the team that I don't care about. But anyways, I will see you guys then. As always, God first. God bless. I'm out. Peace.